So welcome back to our speedrun series and again we have the modern defense here with the black side we play the move pawn to g6 and we go bishop g7 d6 back into a pick Bishop g7 and then we'll play the move pawn to d6 Okay, now we go back into a pick, so we'll play the move knight to f6. d5 or castle. Again, this d5 move is very, very early. So we have a couple of options. We can attack the pawn or we can go e5. I generally suggest you play e5 because when we learn the king's Indian, um, you're going to get into this pawn structure anyway. So if you can play e5, you may as well do it because you get into positions you're probably more familiar with. Okay, so white takes it. I guess we can take back with the pawn or we can take back with the bishop. They both seem perfectly, perfectly playable. If we take back to the pawn, maybe white can push e5 perhaps? But I'm a little bit skeptical because the white pieces are a little bit underdeveloped and the king is not yet castled. So I'm just going to take back with the pawn, get this open f file to play with for my rook. Now I sort of want to stop white from pushing e5, so I do want to play the move pawn to e5. I also want to just play h6 to force white to give up this bishop again. But maybe I play e5 first. This stops white from playing e5. It does give this check on c4, but I can just play king h8. And then if knight d5, I have knight to d7. So it should be fine here for, for black. Yeah, knight to d5, I play knight to d7, I defend this knight, I chase this knight away with the move pawn to c6 next. So yeah, be, be careful to put your bishop and knight in this configuration, it can always walk into forks like this. Here it's okay just because white can play the move knight takes f6 and that's an in-between check. And again, again, um, white is giving up this bishop on f6 unprovoked. Uh, I, I don't understand this, this logic, but it seems everyone is doing it at this level. So we take this dark squared bishop. Okay, give check. I'm just going to move my king to h8. Okay, now I'm thinking to bring my bishop out to g4 to pin this knight on f3. I also have a lot of ideas here to open up the center. Like the fact that the king is stuck in the center, I have ideas of even sacrificing here with pawn to d5 maybe. Open up the center. I'm going to play pawn to d5. So pawn takes, I might even sacrifice a second pawn here with the move pawn to e4. And then queen takes, I might bring my bishop out. And then I might swing my rook across. This looks very, very strong. So sacrificing two pawns, but I'm probably going to win at least one of them back and probably have a big attack to follow. See, so yeah, I can probably play bishop f5 now. I can also take this pawn here. Um, but if I take the pawn, actually, white can castle. So I should play bishop f5. This is a very thematic way of playing as black. And here I can bring the rook into e8. My goal is to disrupt white and be as annoying as possible before white is able to get castled. Um, 
when you have a lead in development, this is what you want to do. You want to really make use of the fact that um, your opponent has a king stuck in the center. And that's what we're trying to do here. We're trying to keep um, attacking white's pieces. We opened up the files. The rook will come to e8 check. Yeah, so we have rook to e8 check. The fact that the queen went to f4, lining up with our queen, is walking into a lot of discovered attacks as well. So if the king ever goes to a light square such as d1 or f1, then we have all these discovered checks picking up the queen. Okay, so king to d2 was played. Now we have a lot of moves here. We have rook e4, which would be a nice tactic to hit the bishop and the queen, but I'm just going to go for the king, so I'm just going to go queen takes b2 here, threatening checkmate with queen takes uh, c2, and we also have some threats involving bishop to c3 check as well. So. Yeah, it's, it's just too many threats now, which white has to deal with. The made in one threat, of course, is um, the most most dangerous one. So white does manage to stop that thread. Uh, I wonder if there's any checkmating ideas here for black. So I do see a way for you to win the queen. Like I said, if you can force the king to a light square, then you do have a lot of discovered checks, which will inevitably pick up the queen. Now. Queen c3 check, king d1, bishop takes c2, would pick up this queen. Is there anything else? Queen to b4 is a good move, and then the king moves, and then again bishop takes, would pick up the queen as well. You can even play the move bishop takes c2 right away, uh, threatening the queen. So there's a lot of moves here. I'm I'm gonna go for checkmate actually. So might play this move queen c3 check. And then my idea is that after the king moves back, I want to try and get a back rank mate. So I want to try and get this rook to e1, and the queen is defending this e1 square as well. So when the king goes to d1, I might move the bishop away, capture this knight, which is removing the defending piece, and then I want to get a piece into that square. That That's the goal. So I want to play bishop to e4 here. I'm also attacking the queen with the rooks. Next move, I want to capture this knight. Also, this bishop is hanging, so I can take the bishop as well.
it's just too many check mating threats everywhere. So you have queen there. Then I just take the knight. We check first, and I can just capture the bishop. So now queen f1 is being threatened, followed by a back rank mate. So we go queen f1 check. And mate. Okay, so what happened this game? So we had transposition back into our pick. Uh, we went for e5 to try and get this pawn structure I mentioned. And after the move pawn to e5, our opponent captured. Uh, we captured with a pawn, bishop g5. So our opponent played um, relatively well. But then he has started to make some mistakes with bishop to b5, allowing c6, which is a loss of tempo for black. And then I think the big mistake here was giving up the bishop completely unprovoked. Could have just dropped the bishop back to d3, but then giving up this very important bishop. The bishop takes f6 again. And then instead of castling, white played the move queen to d3, which allows white to take advantage, uh, black to take advantage of this mistake by opening up the center. So here we can play the move pawn to d5. And because white hasn't yet castled, we can take advantage of white's underdevelopment. And again, sacrifice two pawns here. So because d5 attacking the bishop. Um, if the bishop moves, by the way, and we just take here and then play bishop f5, followed by e4 anyway to open up the position. But after captures e4, uh, pretty much white has to take, and then we develop more pieces into the game. And then, yeah, we continue to keep developing with check. And then um, black's got the king permanently stuck in the center. Um, and the rest is just a matter of um, finishing the game off. So I hope you enjoyed this game. Um, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all on the next one.